Holy is the name of the Lord. I want to greet all our brethren that are present here. And also, our brethren are connected with us from the church in Marietta, in the state of Georgia. The brethren are watching our service. We want to greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite those who can to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Revelations. Revelations 21. Revelations 21, we're going to read only verse 7. We're going to read uh, with a single voice. Who doesn't have a Bible can read it there. Verse 7. Amen. Let us read in a single voice. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Glory to God. The church may be seated. Who, he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. My brethren, we as a church, we have been living a moment that is very special in the history of a people, in the history of the faithful church, a church that doesn't have a name, a church that doesn't have a label, a church that doesn't have an identity linked to this life. I'm speaking of a church that is spread all over the earth. Servant, faithful servants that are being preserved by God in every corner of this planet. And we leave this special moment because we are seeing the end, the, the completion of a promise, a promise that is described in the Bible, which is the rapture of the church, which is the conclusion of a project that was designed in heaven, which is the project of salvation of man through the death of the Son, Jesus. And we, as a church of the last days, we can follow this up. Because the Bible shows us clearly the entire trajectory of the church from the beginning. Throughout these 2,000 years, we have studied the book of Revelations a lot. And you will see, as we have seen, that the history of the church was described prophetically by the Holy Spirit to men, to the servants of God. And we have learned a lot about the seven churches. Uh, we see that throughout the history of the church in this 2,000 years, we see that the enemy of our souls always rose up against us and always had an made an opposition uh, to this project. Show please uh, the, the slide, the projection. There was a, a, a great opposition, and we will see the connection of the flesh, the sin, and of the enemy. And they are both opposing so that men may not reach this project. We will see a great opposition to the doctrine, 
to the Bible from the beginning. We'll see an opposition to the church, to the body of Christ. The church, when it was um, risen in the primitive church, in the beginning of everything, the church had a mission. The church had a message, and the message was to testify of a Jesus that had died, but on the third day he had resurrected, and he was now alive, operating, and reigning, and showing to man that he had been victorious, had overcome our greatest enemy, which is death. The primitive church had this message. That's why the enemy of our souls opposed to it, to destroy the doctrine, to kill the church, to put an end to everything that had begun. But every time that the enemy attacked the church, he was ashamed, and the Holy Spirit was able to work on the life of the church. The more their opposition grew, the more the service of God were tied up, they were imprisoned, killed, the more the gospel would spread, the more the doctrine of the Father would reach to places and cities and countries, because it was not from men, it was a project that was elaborated in heaven. And it wouldn't matter. The more the world would rise up, as rise up against God, would always took care of His church, and so that this word and this project would come to our days. And today we are here. The moment in which we are living today is very similar. The moment in which we live today is something very important, because in the same way that the church overcame uh, the why the church why was the church victorious acts 242 sh show us that they persevered in the doctrine of the apostles and in the fellowship and the, the breaking of the bread the moment in which we live here is very similar because the same spirit the same inspiration is reigning in our days. Today the trials are the same, the battles are the same, the opposition is the same, but the same Holy Spirit that care for so that everything would come to us, He has taken care of each one of us. And in the same way that they overcame on the fellowship and in the breaking of bread, the church in our days, the church of our days, which is the church of the time called soon, has also been victorious in everything. And the way for us to be victorious is exactly this. It is because of our obedience to our call. The obedience to the Word of God. The obedience to everything that one day was revealed to us, which is the love of Jesus toward man. Because the love of God represented in the person of the Lord Jesus. In the same way that the primitive church was victorious, we are also being victorious. We also have known the secret. And the secret is this, is to remain in a body, is to remain obedient to the Father, and to remain obedient to the doctrine in fellowship of the Holy Spirit, proclaiming that Jesus is coming. We also have a message, and that's our message. Jesus is returning. Jesus is returning. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. We've had this responsibility. Our commitment is not with anything linked to this life. Our commitment is with er the eternity. And in the same way that the primitive church overcame, we have also being victorious. We also have a secret. The 
The opposition is the same against the word, against the letter, the secularization of the word, against the Church of Christ. And what we can see is what many, when they let go of the gospel, of the project, when man lets go of what is eternal, and man gets turns his concern to what is something that is not from eternity, but what what something that is for his own benefit, he lived revelation and enter into the things of this life. Then he is defeated. But the Lord has shown us a secret. The secret that we have learned is the theme of this year. The secret that the Church of the Lord has learned is that we will be victorious. Because you, we are already victorious through the Word and through the blood of the Lamb. The secret of the Church is this, that we need to be together waiting for the fulfillment of the prophecy. And this year we also have the theme of the year. That's the theme of the year. Who overcomes will inherit all things and I will be his God and he will be our my son. So the theme for the year 2019 is this. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. When I speak about being to overcome, we, we think about victory. When we say that somebody is victorious, we think about the reward. If you made an effort, if you got prepared, and if you won, if you were victorious, then you expect a reward. But the word says that he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And the difference of receiving a reward and inherit is only one. Because who receives a, a reward is receives what's what was his the result of his own merit. If he received he were victorious and received a reward, it was the result of his own effort. But when you inherit something, you are gaining something that was the merit of someone else. And what we have inherited from the part of God is the salvation Jesus, which is no human merit, is not the result of any human effort, because everything that we needed to do, Jesus has already done for us in the cross. That's why the church of the Lord is victorious through the word and the blood of the Lamb. That's why the church is being victorious. That's why John, when he had his revelation, he already saw the church victorious there in the eternity. And that's why tonight God has caused us to remember this. That's why tonight we close this year with this word. We are victorious. We are being victorious. And we will continue to be victorious because what we expect is uh, an inheritance. An inheritance, an inheritance that was already given us by right, not because of our own merit, but because Jesus already paid a price on the cross and now we are heirs, co heirs with Jesus. The year of 2018 was a year of many victories many trials but the Lord helped us to be victorious and we came to this point because the hands of the Lord have protected us it was because the power of God was revealed to us it was because the will of God was fulfilled in each heart in each home here represented with each servant that knelt down and kept the word of God in his heart and answered uh, to the advices of the Lord and that tried to, to seek to, to overcome the flesh and try to overcome everything that the, the world offers us to try to 
get our focus out of the right thing and to remo remove uh, this inheritance that would make us eternal. It was a year of great battles, but it was a year of oh, on which we will be victorious because the Word of God is preserved in our hearts. And we will start a new year because the promise of the Lord is already here. Maybe. Who knows? We may not even come to the end of 2019. Who knows? Maybe as a, the church, as a church, Jesus may return in the year of 2019. And that's what we desire the most. And then we'll see once again Maranatha being fulfilled in our lives. The promise of God will be fulfilled. And we will be forever in the arms of our, of our Savior. And we will be forever giving praise to our God. It's not going to be a service of 30 minutes, 40 or 90 minutes, but it will be an eternity in the presence of a God that is powerful. What we had this today was just a demonstration. It was a sample of what we are going to uh, enjoy in the presence of the Father forever. That's very gratifying. It's very gratifying to know that we have a God that has zealed for us, that has zeal for the Word of God, that takes care of His servants to those who are alive and those and hears the word of the ones who are sincere. You who entered here tonight, you may also have this experience because we have received from the Lord, we want to share. The experience of life that we have had is exactly this. It is our hope on a promise that will be fulfilled still in our days. And now we're going to hear a song and you will place in the presence of the Lord, your life and this word, the theme of this year may also be the theme and the direction for you and for your family who overcomes, who will inherit all things and I will be his God and he will be my son.
to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Going to have a few words of glorification of the Lord for the victories that we had. I'm going to praise for uh, your victory, Lord. We praise the Lord. We glorify the Lord for the cures, Lord. We pray for the deliverances, Lord. We have not lacked anything, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for our life in your presence. Exalt you, Lord, because you have taken care of us for everything that we need, Lord. We praise you, give you honors for this year, Lord. We praise you for the new year that is coming, Lord. We praise you and give you honors to you for everything that you have done for us. Tuesday, to this day, in the name of Jesus. Or to Jesus. I want to praise the Lord. Because our lives in these places, they, they are a miracle. For your care to us, towards us every day. We praise the Lord, because one day you wrote a new story for us. You found us on the mud, Lord. And you have given us victories every day. We exalt to the Lord for the family that you have given us, for the blessings of the Lord, for this church, for the open doors, for the deliverances, for the victories. Because in every service, you have been made present in, uh, in your house. We, we praise the Lord because we never lacked uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit. We never lacked anything, Lord, because those words are faithful, Lord. 
We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Mm. want to praise you. Because we know that we are blessed to this day, Lord. We want to praise you in a special way, Lord. You have delivered us from the traps of the enemy, Lord. You have delivered us from uh, the diseases, Lord. You have protected our people, Lord. We are thankful to you, Lord. Because the greatest victory that we have is the blessing of salvation. The greatest hope that we have is the return of the Lord Jesus. We praise the Lord because as we are here waiting, we have not lacked anything, Lord, because you are the true shepherd, the one that gives life to, to for, for his sheep, Lord. We praise the Lord because you are with us and we will never lack anything, Lord, for this new year of 2019. We thank you, Lord, with all our heart, with all our understanding, with our soul, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we want to praise your name. I want to thank you, Lord, for this year of victory. Because our salvation, for our salvation, Lord, we want to praise for the lives that have been cured in this place, Lord, for the open doors. We praise you, Lord. We have not lacked anything, Lord. You have been with us in every moment. I want to praise you, Lord, because we know that our name is written in the book of life. And nothing discouraged us. Nothing, Lord, caused us to stop in our walk, Lord, because we have a living God and has sustained us in every moment. We praise you, Lord, because you are, you are a powerful God. A God has taken care of our families, has opened doors of uh, new jobs, Lord. Great is you, Lord, because you are not allowed anything to be lacking in our lives. That's why we praise you for everything that you ought to do this year, this beginning, we praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. To God. That's been the name of the Lord. There is only one mid minute to midnight. Let's finish the service. This year, uh, on bended knee, we're going to start a new year, also kneeling down in the presence of the Lord. 
you will, in prayer now, place your life, your plans, your projects, everything that you desire for the new year. We then launch that God is in this place and the God of Israel, He knows us and He knows what we need. But we need to place our lives before the altar of the Lord so that He may answer our prayers. Now, at this moment, place everything before the altar of the Lord. Glory to God. Thus says your God, my children, each one of you came to this place with, uh, with proofs, we have proof for my strong hands that have sustained you. I give you support in moments in which for you, you can stand up but I, I raised my hand and opened up a way where there was no way. I spoke to you when there was not enough words to reach your heart. I touched our soul. In moments in which there was no medicine that would cure it. And each one of you was able to come to this place as a living proof that I am God. A living proof that my word never fails. You are testimony, a witnesses of the power that I have, uh, have operated and before each one of you. We don't have to fear the future because your tomorrow is not here. Your tomorrow is with me. You need to know that our God is faithful and the true word. There is very little time left because everything is ready. Everything is prepared. And I will return. My spirit will take you and we will meet in my eternity. Rejoice. Everything will pass, but you will stay with me in my glory. My glory will be with you. In, in my presence, you will feel the joy, feel the joy of salvation and the complete victory. I am with you. My glory is in your midst. Exalt your God, because great is my salvation. I will fulfill each one of my promises. And with joy, we'll praise my name, because I'm your Father, your God, your Savior. I am the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Let's be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus.
estão mexendo no microfone aqui. to God. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord God, at this moment, we want to praise your name. Glorify, Lord, for the year that has passed, for everything that you have done on behalf of, the, of your church, on behalf of your people, on behalf of the faithful. We want to praise your name, Lord, because we have not lacked anything. Your word the peace in Jesus, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit has made us always go back to your presence. And that's why tonight, in gratitude to you, we are in your presence. That's the only way that we have to express to you what we have, or what we feel, our joy, is to be in your presence. Receive, Lord, this service in adoration to your name. And that we may have a year 
in the same way as you have promised us, a year blessed in your presence. Never let us look back, Lord. Never let us, let us, God, leave your presence, but that we may be able to overcome all things and remain faithful in you, Lord. Lord, take us home in peace. Bless each home here represented. And the, may the hands of the Lord may be upon each one who, who is present here, even those who are watching this service online, that you may be able to reach them, give them growth and victories for the honor and glory of your name. Is the prayer to say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father and glorious Father, and the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may sit down. I wish everyone a happy 2019. May this year be a year of blessings, growth, and that together we may serve the Lord with greater dedication. Amen. We have an invitation to the bride. This, the sisters here prepared a dinner for everyone. It was became so pretty out there that I'm even thinking about giving up on buying a new church. What do you think? We're going to stay here? Everyone is invited uh, to spend this moment with us also. May the Lord therefore bless us greatly. Amen. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. Happy New Year.